talk about it. Tell me all about it. I'm here. I want to know what's on your mind. Ooh, the world needs to hear from you. And I'm so glad to, to have a conversation to reach the nation. And it's all about you. We'll help each other to discover innovative ways to positively change the world. Greetings, greetings. Welcome to Conversations with Nicole. I am Nicole Everett, your host, and Conversations with Nicole is a talk show based in Tallahassee, Florida, focused on connecting the community through conversations. And today is what I call Mindset Monday. Mindset Monday is an opportunity for you, me, and my guests to talk about whatever it is we want to talk about. And today we are chatting about wearable art therapy wearable art therapy. My special guest is Jim Sherwood, the founder and creative director of the Canvas Project. And so we are going to explore what wearable art therapy is. I was on the phone with somebody today and he was like, what's that? I was like, ah, you got to tune in and find out. So I am going to introduce Jim in just a little bit. But before I do, I want to hear from you. Where are you tuning in from? We are live on Conversations with Nicole Facebook, YouTube, and on the Greater Works Network on YouTube as well. Um, I'm sorry, on Facebook as well. Uh, so if you will, in the comments, put your city and state. Let us know where you're tuning in from. This is an interactive live chat and we fully expect to hear from you your comments your questions are welcome and um yeah we just want to have a great time so i see my mom is here from the mia thank you mom for being here appreciate you so much y'all y'all see this cap i'm wearing it says j-a-b-a-r-i and that is the name of my favorite son, my only child, who is my favorite. Um, his birthday is today. So I'm paying homage to Mr. Jabari Butler. So happy birthday, JB. Love you so much. And uh, I am actually also wearing some of his wearable art. So back when Jabari had his uh, T-shirt business, uh, he would hand paint these t-shirts. So this is a shirt that he made for me. Eh, he probably was in like eighth or ninth grade. And I'm going to stand up real quick so you can see it. But it says paradise. So it is a picture of paradise, according to Jabari and his creativity. And on the back is a scripture um, that he wrote on it that has paradise in the scripture. So I'm super proud of him and his creativity. It was something that I definitely encouraged him and, you know, tried to foster in him as a, a child. And so, um, you know, I, I feel strongly that we are created by the creator to create and we are our best and higher selves when we are doing so. Um, so I see you, Miss Gloria Darling, temporarily from California. All right. Uh, we, we can find out what that's about later on. But we, nevertheless, we are glad that you are here. All right. Well, well while others of you are joining us, I am going to go ahead and uh, share Jim Sherwood's bio as the founder, creative director of the Canvas Project. Some of Jim's duties include hand painting custom sneakers with a unique touch that showcase the identity of Canvas, educating the youth on how to become successful in art, entrepreneurship, and the Web3 space, which we'll find out about a little bit later, consulting with businesses and organizations on how they can, can convert over from Web 2 world to the Web 3 world, designing merch and apparel for Canvas and other brands. In the community, you can find him working with students on creating art, engaging in projects, empowering creativity, and fun raffles, auctions, and contests, teaching students about the Web 3 space, plus the importance of community and growing through decentralization. And in the past three years, Canvas has given out hundreds of art kits to students to help promote art in the community. And some of his recognitions include 
in the last six years, um, having custom work feature on major television broadcast networks, networks multiple times, also being highlighted on the local news stations for work with students in the community and in the Web3 space. And also um, in December of 2022, Nike selected Jim to speak about the Web3 space and how it correlates to things t- we do within our business. And so um, I will tell y'all, I met this brother actually at a um, virtual job fair, a, a, a local virtual job fair. I was in charge of the creative room for the job fair. And he came on. I'd never seen him before, never heard a story before, but I was blown away. And while I wanted to connect with him then, I had to stay focused because I had some more, some another um, entrepreneur behind him that was coming to do their interview. But as fate would have it, as the universe would have it, our paths did cross again. And so I'm so super excited and delighted to have him here on the show with me today. So y'all help me welcome Mr. Jim Sherwood. <laughs> hey, hey. Thank, thank you so much for that introduction, Nicole. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I appreciate it. I, you know, made me sound like I actually do some do some stuff. So <laughs> you do. <laughs> you <it>. do. <laughs> appreciate it. Glad to be here. My pleasure. Glad to have you. So I'm gonna ask as I often do of my guests i've read a little bit about what you do but i want to know who are you in your own words um not not what you do because we we read a little bit of that but who is jim sherwood <laughs> who is jim sherwood Ooh, i guess i don't get asked that every day um <laughs> who am i <laughs> uh well i'm definitely an introvert um that is one thing about myself that a lot of people uh do not know um i love (laughs) love being at home um Mm -hmm. i hate the snow even though i am from boston massachusetts originally um Mm -hmm. uh, i am definitely a creative person i I always i'm kind of always thinking i don't know i like to describe myself as somebody that's kind of always having a clash between like right brain and, and left brain usually the creative side Okay. Uh, wins, but um, I'm like, and then the other side of me is like, I, I'm like the, like a chess player. Like I love chess and strategy and, and problem solving and, and things like that. Um, nice. So I don't know, I guess, yeah, I guess that's Jim Sherwood. <laughs> that's good. That's good. All right. I like that. I think uh, a lot of us are that right and right and left brain are fighting from time to time. So just all the time on which day, which one will win, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> the ongoing battle. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So tell us a little bit about how you, you know, kind of got started founding the Canvas Project, just to give us a little historical reference. Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, about seven years ago, um, I had moved to Tallahassee, uh, Florida from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I went to school in Pittsburgh and lived there for some years. Um, after that, and was coming to Florida a lot, doing insurance, and eventually just you know fully uh, relocated. And kind of the moment that I relocated, um, it was like weird. The insurance stuff kind of stopped working out, and I was in a position where I um, like I, I honestly I didn't know what to do, um, but I just knew I wanted to start a business. But you know you can't start a business with any funds, or, you know anything like that. So I ended up, um, I actually was probably, I was unemployed for about eight or nine months. I ended up getting a job um, with a company in town and really saved up a lot of money, put a lot of money into this business of, you know, painting custom sneakers. I, I didn't know how or what direction, uh, what I was going to do. Um, uh, at the time, I wasn't painting. Uh, two guys that were, you know, friends of mine. Um, one is a mentor, uh, we're helping paint sneakers and I was kind of just like, you know, overseeing everything, handling administration stuff, doing stuff on social media. And we just started kind of gaining, you know, popularity 
and eventually um one of the artists kind of had to take a break and couldn't paint as much i got more into painting um the uh you know rapper and actor ti uh, ended up purchasing a pair that i had uh had done and nice. that was kind of what pushed me to continue painting and then eventually um over time i ended up actually being the only artist and um we you know one of the things i also wanted to found the company on was supporting art and education working mm -hmm. with kids doing stuff in the community and then over time that kind of transformed into you know um this combination of you know painting sneakers doing programs working with kids and then also um doing a little bit of consulting with you know this whole web3 blockchain new technology space gotcha so not an artist by trade in terms of historically like you didn't grow up uh you know painting these masterpieces or anything <laughs> like that it's something no. that you have picked up more recently but it is something that you really enjoy doing 100 percent, 100 percent. i um i definitely definitely wish it was something that i had started doing earlier in life mm. for sure gotcha Gotcha, gotcha. So we got a few more people that have joined us. My sister Shayla, who is down in South Florida. Thank you for being here. And Mr. Marcus Boston, who is in Tampa. Thank you for being here. So I've talked to you about this already, but for the viewers, tomorrow, October 10th, is World Mental Health Day. World Mental Health Day. And so the theme for World Mental Health Day this year is... Um, the idea around mental health being a universal human right, a universal human right, which I absolutely agree with that. It should be a universal human right. Um, and there's a lot that goes into that. But the connection for me as it relates to this topic tonight is just how art is so universal, right? You know, art moves us. And whether that's um, visual art, performing art, culinary art, art moves us. And that's, I think, something that happens, again, universally. And so, you know, the whole idea around um, art therapy, um, which is a tool that therapists use to help, you know, patients interpret, express, and resolve their emotions and thoughts, is is huge. I mean, it's kind of a more um while art therapy as a discipline began like in the 1940s, it became like more widespread in the 1970s and I think it has expanded and I don't think we really have kind of tapped into um just kind of the benefits of art from a, a mental health standpoint. And so I will give this disclaimer Jim is not a clinician. However, he makes what I believe is wearable art therapy. And I say that because the if you all go to his um his page on Facebook, his Facebook uh, account as well as on Instagram, you will see some of these masterpieces that he has made with sneakers, which I'm hoping he is going to share some of that with us this evening. Um, but my, again, my whole point is that, you know, art as therapy is, is a, a, a big thing. And you have been able to successfully monetize this, right? You know, this is like the ultimate to be able to do something that you like, love and to get paid for it. Right. 100%, 100%, um, you know, it, it's definitely a blessing, number one, I mean, to be able to, you know, have, have found a way to turn this into, you know, an actual career. Um, very, very tricky the first, I mean, still at times it's tricky, you know, because it, it's a very weird, when it comes to like doing market research, is it like for the business and, and you know, figuring out 
how to scale and, and you know, what other things you want to integrate into, you know, what we do maybe on top of, you know, painting shoes. Um, it, it's a, it was a very interesting uh, uh, process. And I think getting to the point where, you know, I just was, you know, not, I don't want to say comfortable because obviously as an entrepreneur, you don't, you know, you always want to be on your toes. You don't never necessarily want to be comfortable, but I think more so at a point where I started understanding like what my skill set was and Mm -hmm. and I started becoming comfortable with, you know, um, the, the fact that, uh, you know, people were really liking the work that, that I, you know, we were doing, putting out, um, people i had luckily um i had two two close friends um you know business friends as well but also close you know they become close friends that had you know kind of had conversations with me where they said you know you 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 can monetize this and not only can you monetize this you you know you have to kind of up your prices like there was a point where i you know i had been an artist Mm -hmm. um at one point so i I didn't really know how to gauge you know the cost of of what i was doing it wasn't a whole lot of other artists i could go to that were painting sneakers where i could hey what do you charge you know what do you charge so it was a very um weird path (laughs) but i i wouldn't change you know i wouldn't change how it went because i felt like being somebody that wasn't an artist previous i had to kind of go through certain things to really understand oh this is really what it's like to to be an artist and the things that you you know you have to do to kind of I mean I'm a ex-athlete so I was always you know you're always on a team like when you're an artist it's like you might have a team around you that's helping promote you know the art but you're, you're kind of your own team like <laughs> so yeah no makes a lot of sense um you're right. You know, you go from uh, where you, especially also that you're working for someone as well. And now you're trying to make up the pricing. And, you know, you don't necessarily have somebody um, in your your area that's right. doing this type of work that you can, you know, that can maybe be a mentor or give you a, a clue in, <laughs> in terms of what the pricing might be. So, yeah. you know. I know identifying what their value is is very important. Um, but on a from a, <clears throat> a art standpoint, you know, again, you and I have kind of talked pre uh, the show tonight. Just how you know, starting out, you kind of overthink it. Um, you know, with with doing art, and you know, I, I think back to my childhood. You know, this art that whole conversation around art takes me back there because I feel like um, I was uh, an artist of sorts, even though I didn't call it that. Um, But I was in in my elementary school, we had like a little art club and I was part of that, but I, I, I was pretty creative, you know, in terms of doing that sort of thing, but I, it just, I felt free doing it. Right. And I could be myself, you know, as I stated, um, in the opening, I, I truly believe that, you know, we are created by the creator to create and we are our highest and best selves when we are creating. And so I want to see, I want to get the, the viewers um, in on this. So how many of you uh, feel like you, you know, have a creative bone in your body? And if so, what is that thing that you most like to create? If you will, in the comments, what is it that you most like to create? That could be um, making an, an outfit or some, you know, wardrobe or baking a cake or making a yard look immaculate or writing or um, hand painting sneakers or <laughs> making jewelry. Um, I will tell you that these earrings that I have on, I made myself. Um, a girlfriend of mine started making jewelry and had a jewelry making class. And um, this was the result of that. And I actually, I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, all right. So we have a couple of more people that have joined us. So let me 
definitely acknowledge them. Miss Key Osha from Tallahassee, thank you for being here. Miss Kiki, um, Coach Jay Hunter, thank you for being here. Nice setup. He is here in Tallahassee as well. All right. So Marcus said new books. So I'll tell y'all, Marcus has 17 books that he's written and is working on like three more before the end of the year. <laughs> right. Ooh. Yes. Kudos to him. Um, my sister, she likes writing stories and sometimes poetry. Yes, she is actually an English teacher. Um, and we got Miss Jeeva on. She said, I enjoy painting on canvas. Yes, love it, love it, love it. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. All right, my mom, my creative talent is designing and altering clothes. Yes, it is. My mom a good one. is a wonderful seamstress, I tell you. All right. So we all have, and I know we sometimes we may not think of it um, as something creative, but we all do have some gifts, some talent that we do well. Cutting hair, putting on makeup, um, gardening. It could be a number of things. Um, but I just want to highlight that we all have things that we do well. And if we look a little closer, we probably have multiple things that we do well. But we just probably haven't really taken the time to explore it. You know, getting back to my childhood, like one of the things that I will say is that I was exposed to a lot of different things. You know, I was, I went to dance. Um, I tried piano lessons. Um, I had, I think my third grade teacher, Miss Hawkins, she had us doing these macrame pot hangers that would hang plants. I never done any type of macrame before. Never, you know, it was a funny name. I didn't even know what that was, but I did it. And she would enter our whatever we made into the county fair and we win prizes and things of that nature. So, you know, I think encouraging that creativity is so important. It, it's very what important. What you think, Jim? No, it's, it's very important and especially especially the the younger the better and and i i say that because i and my parents definitely gave me the opportunity to explore other things if i wanted to mm -hmm. but i mean it was really me that was just stuck on basketball you know i didn't want to do anything else i didn't that was all i cared about if i was playing video games it had to be basketball video games you okay know, i just was was stuck on basketball but i more so myself wish that at a younger age i had kind of you know just dibbled and dabbled with with maybe art or maybe even music or different you know a few more different things that were, would, would have been more on the creative side outside of just basketball because um a lot of times creativity from other things will spark creativity into other things that you don't even expect it to. So. Absolutely. Yeah, which is actually my point exactly is, you know, probably had I not been drawing and sketching and that sort of thing, I may not have even been open to the possibility of doing these crafts. You know, um, we also like in art, we would make things that were messy. So like pottery, we work with clay and, you know, put designs in it. We would, uh, you know, work with um, linoleum and, you know, carve out things with the linoleum. So, you know, my art teacher was kind of out there, but um, I'm awesome, great. Mr. Joseph was his name, but he, he, you know, would have us do a lot of different, different things, which again, that exposure is key. All right. We got God first. Brittany said, I need to explore. Yes, definitely encourage you to explore Brittany. Um, if there are some classes that are, are taking place in your community, you know, painting with a twist or, you know, something like that, by all means, encourage you to, to do any of it. And it could not not only be, again, visual art, it could be culinary, it could be performing, um, learn how to play an instrument, take a singing lesson, you know, learn how to, you know, cook a particular dish. I mean, there, there's a number of ways that you can express that creativity. Uh, Mr. Ishmael Rents is on, who's over in Gainesville, my family freshman brother. He said, I like coordinating attire. And we see that by your picture. You're looking very <laughs> <good>. <laughs> Yes, sir. 
<laughs> Indeed. All right. My sister said, oh, yeah, I forgot about singing and dancing. Yes. So we come from a, a music loving family and um, both she and I love to dance. So, yes. So um, in working with the youth, what's been your experience in terms of the, the art kits and things that you've, you know, dispersed and when you've talked to them about, you know, what you do, what, what's been the, the feedback or your encounters with them? Sure. Um, so I, I think one of the, the funniest things is typically when I first, um, if I'm meeting like a group of kids for the first time, uh and i say when i say i'm an artist they usually there's always at least one or two that are like and you know like <laughs> like what else like right. you know kind of like that like that's all you do and you know so um i remember there was a particular situation that i was at one of the you know community centers um i was working at Mm -hmm. And I had I had stopped and I asked all of the kids, I said, um, I started naming different like rappers, you know, that were our music artists that were relevant to most of the kids. Mm -hmm. And they all said, oh, yeah, I know them. I know them. And I said, do you all know the other ways that they make their money? And <laughs> and some of the, you know, some of them were saying random things, but most of them just like, you know, making music, like making music. And then I started saying things like, you know, have you ever seen Cardi B on a Pepsi commercial? And they were like, oh, oh, yeah. And they're like, do y'all know she gets paid for that? Which kind of makes her an influencer, which mm -hmm. makes her that that's a whole separate job title from her rapping. And then the kids are like, oh. So the the biggest thing is really, you know, a, a lot of times kids, they they kind of only know what they're exposed to. Yes. And regardless of where you're growing up as, as a kid, you know, you're still only going to know what you're exposed to. So mm -hmm. a, a lot of kids, they don't, you know, the, the, there's a very limited uh, kind of when you talk about like career opportunities, there's a very limited amount of, you know, like jobs in, in their minds. And usually whenever I'm, you know, around a, a group of kids, the first like week to two weeks, um, you know, I really try to spend that time getting them to understand that even if you're doing one thing, it's, it's never one thing because if you go out and you start your own business and you, you know, you start a barber shop or, or a beauty salon, whatever it is, there's going to be something that's going to challenge you outside of just being a barber, right. or just being a beautician, mm -hmm. whether it's paperwork, whether it's setting up an LLC, whether it's, you know, all the little things that, you know, are going to challenge you to work on skills or, or, or teach you that you had skills that you might not have even known that right. you had. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I tell them that, um, cause I'm actually outside of what I do, you know, with the canvas project, I'm also a referee, um, mm -hmm. for basketball in the community. So some of the kids, you know, I'll say to them, like, I'm not just sitting here telling you that I do something other than, you know, creatively direct <laughs> the canvas project. I'm going to see you jokers this weekend at the game. Right. Because I'm also going to be doing that. And then it, mm -hmm. it, it gives them some perspective um, because we're not living in the same days and times as we were 10, 15, 30 years ago. You know, you have to be doing multiple things to not just be successful, but to figure out what you like to do and mm -hmm. eventually figure out what you're also good at. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. So, um, we are at almost halfway through the show. So for the, those of you who are just joining us, I am on with Mr. Jim Sherwood, founder and creative director of the Canvas Project. And we are talking about wearable art therapy, wearable art therapy. So we've talked a, about the therapy a little bit. We've talked about the art. So let's talk about the wearable piece. 
Um, and but before we do that, I see uh, my mom mentioned she agrees about young children being exposed. That is very important. And we also have Mr. Alex Williams on with us uh, in Miami Gardens, Florida. Thank you for being here, my friend. So let's talk about the wearable. So, you know, we're talking about custom painted sneakers. All right. Do we have some examples that you want to maybe share? I do. So okay. I have um, I have one by me, and this is a good one because um, this is actually kind of correlated to the, you know, digital and, and, and tech stuff that, you know, we work with as well. So we have this, I have this, uh, all of our custom sneakers, they come with hang tags. Okay. So this particular hang tag is actually a, so I'm going to try not to get too technical here, but it is an NFT, which yeah. is also known as a non-fungible token, which is yeah. also known as a digital asset. That's the best way, the simplest terms to think of it is, a, you know, it's a digital asset. Um, it's rare, something that we got um, about a year and a half ago, and we decided to turn it into a custom sneaker. So we took an all-white pair of Air Force Ones and... Um, literally put it on the sneaker so if you kind of look mm -hmm. you, know, you can see and then on the back of the actual um hang tag there's a scan code yes. and that scan code goes directly to uh the digital asset like there's a website that shows you that we own you know the digital asset uh as a company nice. so that is, you know, an example of, and, you know, very, we do very, like, very detailed work and, and you know, we changed up the laces and mm -hmm. we try to get very heavy into the concept, concepts and, and, you know, place different things in different places. You know, our goal is to, when you, um, you know, see our work to kind of say, ah and then if you hear the story behind it after then it's like the second like ah uh, that, that, that's yeah that's, that's right. what you try to do right 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 so yes how long does it take you to um create something like that sure sure um it really it depends on the project um you know typically working on multiple projects at one time mm -hmm. um i think if i was to like single a project out and you know, not only be working on one project at a time. I, if I had to say take an estimate, maybe like a week to two weeks. Okay. But you know, that's I, I would say that's more so just the painting process. You know, there's still you got to measure certain things and figure out where you want to place it, and things need to be taped, and um, sneakers have to be acetone down before you paint them. Right. Um, this is like a whole process that people would, you know, would never know. Um, but I tell people all the time, like we've done cleats for guys that, you know, play in the NFL, college mm -hmm. football. And imagine us painting or imagine, you know, a pair of cleats being painted, but still being able to be worn in the game. That That mm -hmm. is the definition of wearable art. And we can even throw on the therapy because everyone gets to showcase their, you know, as the kids are saying now, drip. Yeah, and, drip. <laughs> drip, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, and, you know, okay. that makes you feel good mentally. That's going to make you go out there and want to catch those touchdowns and, you know, block the guys, maybe dunk on somebody. Who knows? Okay. All right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm going to get the viewers involved. Anybody got some drip out there? Listen, does anybody have owned any drip that they are proud to wear to showcase? <laughs> I will tell you all that I am also getting me a pair of uh canvas project CWN originals made uh Ooh. right now as we speak. So that's right. I, I will be sporting my drip really, really soon. So y'all be on the lookout. Yes. All right. Uh so Marcus said nice custom sneaker. We got Coach Merv on. He said, let's go. I need some Boys the Kings custom sneakers for my youth. So Merv is in Madison County. He has about 76 um, young boys that he is mentoring. 
Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I'm actually going to speak to his group next Tuesday. Um, so yeah, he's doing a phenomenal job over there. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, he said, I'm locked in. Let's get us some of that drip. All right. Okay. Cool. <laughs> we got to make it happen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We got Enigma Sip on here. He said, I sadly am dripless. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that that is okay. I, I'm so busy making drip for everybody else. I'm kind of dripless, you know, myself. <laughs> so. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> he he kind of changed that. So Enigma, he has a um a show, a podcast that he does. It's hip hop focused too. And so E, you gotta, and he's right here in Tallahassee. You gotta, you gotta make that happen. All right, Marcus said, how much is a custom shoe? Oh goodness, oh goodness, straight to the pricing. Straight um, to the pricing. <laughs> <laughs> so so typically, um. I mean, it really varies. It, it varies on, on what you want done. Um, it varies on, you know, sometimes the size of the shoe. It varies on the type of shoe. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 there's a few factors. Uh, I will say it is definitely not the cheapest thing to get done in the world. Mm -hmm. um, typically, you're going to be looking at, you know, 500, 600 plus. Um, in certain situations, you know, we've had clients that, you know, thousand and up, depending on what type of things they're trying to do for like, you know, their brand or bigger organizations that we've worked with. Um, and I mean, certain situations, we, you know, we definitely have stuff that's less than that, um, depending on, you know, what type of other business things we might be working on. So um, we try to keep it as fair as possible. But, you know, uh, we've also been doing it for a long time and and you know as artists you kind of spend the or as an artist you know you spend the first depending on what type of art you do you know three four or five years kind of giving stuff away trying to connect with you know uh celebrities and people that can kind of help you know promote the brand and then you know eventually you get to a point where you like to think that you're able to kind of charge you know what your your work is is worth and you you know just like uh, any yes. all businesses are increasing yes. in prices, you know, and inflation, you know, it's just it's everything, yeah, you know, absolutely. moves in the same way. So. No, absolutely. Um, Ish said he got some custom kicks just in time for this football season. All right. Ish, you're going to have to uh, uh, post a picture of these custom kicks, this drip that you got going on. All right. Mom said, does the customer purchase the shoes? So do they purchase the shoes or do does the cost include the price of the shoes? Great question. Great question. Um, to answer that, either way, um, we, we, we do both. Like we, um, like I said, we've done some big, we did something for um, the American Cancer Society and the NCAA um, men's basketball tournament a few years ago. And they... I think they shipped us like 20 pairs of shoes. So that was, you know, what they wanted to do. And we were cool with that. And then um, if you don't want to do that, um, we just included, you know, whatever the pricing is of the shoe, we just include it into the order and we'll grab it for you. So either way, so so Enigma said, charge your worth, bro. <laughs> you, you, you have to or else I, you know, won't be able to eat dinner after. Right. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Get off this. Wow, yeah. It costs, it costs. You you don't know, you know, that until you get into it. And like you said, you know, you, you know, those early years, you are trying to build it. And so you have incurred a lot of costs, a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort. So um and you know that that's just the way it is as an entrepreneur. But as it progresses and you build, then you're able to, you know your page of work so it's all good right. so you know your customers do they they have a great sense of pride in wearing these uh custom custom painted uh sneakers that you create for them this custom painted drip <laughs> yes um for sure I, I would say the biggest you know this is this is going to be funny but the the biggest issue is um people you know, mustering up the guts to, to wear them. You know, a lot of times people get them and, and they, they're like, oh, how, how am I supposed to wear these? You know, we um, have been working on, uh, 
I got a few more pairs I got to bring to them this week, but the FAMU men's golf team. Yeah. And I've been over there a few times and the guys are always like, oh, like we don't even, we, we wore them one time and they got a little bit of dirt on them. And I'm like, well, that's what you guys did, like their shoes. And they're like, yeah, but they look nice. So um, I, I get I get that a lot. And um, I have to like tell people, you know, whenever I see them, I have to be like, have you worn them? Like, uh -huh. wear, wear, wear them, you know, it's okay. That's probably going to be me. <laughs> it, but the the funniest thing is everyone before they get before they get them like in their hands it's uh -huh. always oh yeah i'm gonna put them i'm gonna put them right on them yeah someone wear them and then they get them and it's like oh i don't know if i can wear these yeah uh -huh. I can every imagine. time every i can time. imagine it. i can imagine it so what encouragement would you give to somebody that is you know, struggling with creativity and thinks, uh, you know, whatever this is I'm trying to do, it's just not going to be good enough. Great question. Um, first thing I'll say is don't give up. Um, and I say that simply because if you feel as an individual that what you're doing is, is genuinely going to be beneficial and you'll be able to make a living from it. You know, you have to be realistic about your situation and how, you know, how long you can go because you have to be able to, you know, eat meals and if you have a vehicle and, you know, things like that, keep a roof over your head. But, um, you know, if you have one person around you, two people around you, um, somebody that maybe doesn't see the same vision that you see, but wants to or is trying to mm -hmm. um you know bounce ideas off of those people uh, uh challenge them to to if they are close with you give you ideas and mm -hmm. and give you genuine feedback on um you know what it is you might be uh working on or, or the path that you know you're trying to go down because if I, my path in regards to, you know, business from how I started seven years ago to where I'm at now, I'm still every single day I'm working on something new, learning something new. Oh, I was supposed to do this this way. I was supposed to do this uh, that way. And I think a lot of times we psych ourselves out if we feel like we're either going to fail at something or we don't know how to do it or we're not going to be able to figure out how to do it and, and we just end up never getting to to trying it whereas if you at least try it and it doesn't work out what i always tell people is there might be something that comes from what you tried that takes you in a different direction from what you originally planned on going in and yeah. you never figure that out if you never try if so never. that's why you kind of got to just keep going and and you know, I never thought I would be somehow painting sneakers would somehow translate into, you know, dealing with like technology and, and teaching kids about technology and entrepreneurship and connecting it to art. Like, I, I never thought that would be the case, but I would have wouldn't have been able to see what things would have turned into if I would have gave up. Mm -hmm. Yes, very good. So Tracy said, and she was commenting as it relates to the people that don't want to wear the sneakers, they'd rather display than wear your art. Um, but I just want to say, um, in addition to add on to what you were saying, you know, you never know until you try. So, you know, as, as adults, we, you know, are kind of sometimes can be kind of reserved as it relates to it. We're just not as free as we were maybe as little children. And so I encourage us all to tap into that that little boy that little girl that was free and did like to color or draw or sketch or make paper mache or you know write poems or what have you you know tap into all of that because you know there is um there's freedom in that there's you know being in a, a zone if you will with that and like um, Jim has said, you never know what else can come from that, um, you know, on the art therapy side. 
of it uh, because we don't fully understand how these brains work and how art therapy itself works. Um, there are studies that have shown that it can help with mental conditions, especially those related to mood and anxiety, depression, trauma, low self-esteem, and similar disorders. And so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to connect the two and bridge the gap here, even though I know Jim has made a whole business out of, you know, what he does. You know, there is um, what I would call, uh, you know, like this healing effect from it. And while you may not be painting sneakers, again, there's something else from a creative standpoint that you can do. So we got a couple of questions here. Marcus wants to know, do you make custom hats and hoodies as well? Um, so we do. Um, they're just not painted, but we actually, uh, a lot of people don't know, we have a website with like our own apparel and stuff like that. And we actually make a lot of custom uh, apparel for some of the um, NFT communities that we're in. And like you know, the digital asset communities that we're in. So, um, yes, we do make custom stuff. All right. And my mom, do you paint other accessories? Uh, yes. Um, mostly leather products. Um, because a lot of the you know sneakers we paint are, um, are leather. So you know, we we've done wallets. I have a bag sitting behind me that's been a Louis Vuitton bag that's been staring at me that I need to work on um yeah like uh, i'm trying to think we've done some like some airpod like an airpod case i think a couple okay. years ago so That's yeah we're pretty pretty open done maybe one or two canvases but yeah cool 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 so again i want to get the the viewers involved um as it relates to this so i want to challenge you all i'm sure there's something maybe that you have a desire to do um, from an artistic standpoint. And again, it doesn't have to be visual art. It can be, you know, culinary. It can be um, performing or, or some other kind of art. Um, so if you don't mind sharing uh, an art or, or something that you have a desire to do and that you're going to push yourself to, to at least give it a try, let us know in the comments. Something that you have a desire to do from an artistic standpoint that you've been, you know, wanting to do, but just been like, eh, I don't know, I, you know, it's not going to be all that great or wonderful, or I just don't think I can or what have you. If there's something, let us know what that might be. Let us know, let us know, let us know. I'm curious. So for me, it is sewing. Like I have attempted, my mom is a seamstress. I even got a sewing machine. But just, eh, mm -mm. I got to connect you with my mom, Nicole. Like, what? She, she'll be on the phone with you for hours talking about so she, She's been doing it. That's like, yeah, that's that's my mom's thing. It really? That's well, my mom's thing. Okay. Well, your mom and my mom need to go. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'd be worried about poking Am I going to, am I going to bleed with the bleed, needle? Or right, with the needle yeah. or something? I got oh. you. I got you. Okay. All right. Marcus said he would like to take a jazz dance class. Okay. That's a, that's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. You need to, you need to look that up. I'm sure somebody in Tampa, the Tampa area has got a jazz dance class that you can take. Yeah, All right. My mom's. My mom said yes. I think she was saying yes to you, to her and your mom hooking up because my mom yeah. talk sewing shop with anybody. Yeah. All right. Um, Brittany, I would love to build me a home from the ground up. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So no, that Brittany, is actually. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, Brittany, I would recommend that you get with Habitat in your area to learn some of that. Um, you know, in terms of kind of what it takes to build a home, that's a kind of a, a a free way to really get some hands-on experience. Go ahead. What were you gonna say, Jim? Oh no, I, I was just gonna say that 
building a house from the ground up out of all of the things that you could do that would be related to art that is actually probably one of the most artistic things that anybody could do building the house from the ground up because you think of you have to artistically see it from the outside and then you have to artistically see it from the inside mm-hmm. you do now that's a good that's one the- so definitely encouraging you to do that yeah all right. My sister Shay said, I can't remember the last time I have I have picked up a pen and a notebook to write a story. I would like to get back into writing again. I would also like to get back into dancing again. All right. That's a good tip. It is. So Shay, encouraging you to do that. There is probably a voice recorder on your phone. So if you don't have time to write, you can just talk into your phone and it will transcribe it for you. So that's a little hack that you could potentially do um, unless you just want to write it down. And dancing, you know, there's a whole bunch of YouTube videos out there that's got your name on it. So listen, that's how I learned some of the line dances that I know. So, you know, just sneak some time away to take in a dance and before you know it, you'll be dancing again but encouraging you to do it encouraging you to do it all right so jim i'm going to give you an opportunity to give some closing remarks and also tell the folks how they can connect with you yes yes well i definitely wanted to say first off um thank you so much to everybody that tuned in and and nicole i appreciate the opportunity to be on here this has been amazing and i can't wait to continue to watch you know some more episodes uh, from here on out um but yeah no i this this is this has honestly been great like um i think you know when i think of that word uh therapy you know at the end of the wearable art when i think of the therapy piece um i think anything that you do that kind of takes your mind off of everyday life and the stresses Mm -hmm. of everyday life is Mm -hmm. a good way to consider something you know therapy because you could be you know you could be a a race car driver whereas to somebody else that's stressful but maybe to the race car driver that's their moment where they their therapy because they're not thinking about everyday life like i know Mm -hmm. when i used to play basketball that was my therapy because i wasn't thinking about everyday life so um, when I think of therapy and, and you know, things to, to, to do, um, anything that takes you away from your everyday life, it, it do it as much as you can, you know, because that, that is always going to give you that fresh reset, you know, that peace of mind. And it could be something that you, you, you're really good at that you didn't even know you were really good at. So, mm-hmm. um, as far as where to, uh, to find me or, or us as a brand, um, on Instagram at canvasco.shop, C-A-N-V-A-S co.shop um, on Instagram. And then uh, I'm pretty sure it's the same on Facebook. I can't, you know, it might be an underscore or something like that, um, but I think it's the same on Facebook. Um, we're on Twitter or what's now called X um, with Canvas Co underscore shop. Um, and then I am on LinkedIn. I think we have a business page on LinkedIn as well, but you know, I'm on LinkedIn is Jim Sherwood. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Wonderful. Wonderful. So y'all connect with them, follow them on, um, all of the social media platforms and, you know, uh, as we have been doing tonight, encouraging you to, uh, get your your creativity uh mojo back (laughs) because we can lose it as adults you know we get so caught up into you know working and taking care of ourselves and our our families and you know just all of the cares of this world and so we really um should get back to if we don't do it um being creative and, and doing those things that bring us some joy and some happiness. Um, Miss Brittany said, thank you, Jim. I think she was responding to your comment about 
of building the home. So I hope you all have um, found this conversation to be helpful in some way um, and encouraging. Uh Oh, I see Mr. Michael Cork uh, from the Hallelujah Morning Show on 95.3 FM here in Tallahassee has joined us. Thank you for being on here, my brother. Uh, we got Coach Merv. He said, great interview and wish you the best. Good seeing people's dreams come true through dedicated work and not expecting something, someone to do it for you. I respect you. Nice. Thank you, Coach Merv. Appreciate you. All right. So if some of you are already chiming in, I'm not even having to ask, but I appreciate that. If you all have found this to be beneficial, let us know. My sister's giving us a couple of hand claps there. Appreciate it. And again, Shay, encourage you to write that story and get the dancing, girl. Get the dancing. Um, we'll have to dance when I come down to South Florida uh, the next time, for sure, for sure. So, um, Jim, you uh, I know you're probably going to be real busy for this upcoming holiday season. Yes. Yes, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting one. I'm gonna definitely be in my studio a lot, but um, I think I'll be good. You know, I, I hopefully after doing this for the seventh year, you know, I think I'm ready. But I, I guess we'll see, right? <laughs> indeed, indeed. Well, I will tell um, the viewers you and I have been talking about the possibility of doing a um, a class which I'm hoping that we can pull that off in 2024. So you all be on the lookout for the conversations with Nicole, uh, the canvas project, maybe uh, hand painted sneaker class uh, coming up. That's what we were we working on it. We working on it. Cause I, I think that would be really, really dope. So let's, let's see if we can make that happen. I agree. I agree. Um, Indeed. All right. My mom said very encouraging. Thank you, mom. Appreciate you. All right. Well, good people. We are going to call it a night again. Tomorrow is World Mental Health Day, which is all about um, self, well, being aware of the importance of um, mental health. But the theme for this year is mental health is a universal human right. So we need to work towards making it that way. Um, and, um, you know, get involved in some of the mental health activities that are going into, on, on in the community. I will mention just quickly before we close out, there is a um, Black men's mental health event that is taking place on Friday on FAMU's campus um, at 6 p.m. in the pharmacy building in the Florida Blue Auditorium. There are, I think, about five uh, national um, mental health advocates um, that are coming. And actually, one of them was on my show, Dr. Um, Jason, who's out of South Florida. He's actually a, a licensed um, counselor. But um, they'll be here on FAMU doing a, a Black men's mental health counseling event. And then on Saturday, um, She Speaks Solutions is having their World Mental Health Fair on FAMU campus from um, 11 to 2, I believe. And so, uh, you, you know, definitely Tallahassee community take advantage of, of those things. Um, all right. I see a couple of more comments. Ms. Brittany said, Coach Merv. Oh. So they, they got a whole side conversation going on. I'm going to let y'all have that. And then Marcus said, those Nike Air High Roof. Ryu. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> all right. So he must have gone to your Instagram. Website. Check it out. Yeah, something. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, follow him, follow him, follow him. Because he's got some really... Um, you know, dope things that he's come out with, very creative. And I'm I'm sure we're going to see much, much more. We would definitely want to support you in what you're doing, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, good people. Y'all have a great rest of the evening and we will see y'all next time. <laughs>